What's up guys, it's Mac 111 and it has been a while since I have done a loadout video. So that is what we're gonna be doing today. I played like two weekends ago at Splatter Park and this is pretty much exactly what I wore except I did wear like a regular t-shirt instead of the Hawaiian shirt but I figured this was funny and then I wore I think actually it might have been the same shorts that I play. So this is mostly geared kind of towards an open play video. I will talk a little bit about some of the stuff I run for Milsim, but I have not played at a serious Milsim event in like two or three years now because the Milsim in Ohio kind of died out and then I've been in Indiana with college. Uh, but first off, we are going to start out with the gun. You guys know this thing. I've done a few videos on this. This is my tried and true Crytek Polar Star. I built this, I think, like two and a half years ago. I have run HPA pretty consistently for about four years now. Uh, up front, I have a Tokimori Type 89 flash hider. I love this thing. This has stayed with so many of my guns. We have a Real Steel VTAC rail. This actually came off one of Sure Shot Midget's builds. Um, it's really awesome. It feels really good. I have the mount up here for my camera so I can run my zoom cam on the front. And then my favorite vertical grip, the BCM vertical foregrips. These are like their gunfire vertical grips. I am actually sending this as well as this to a guy in Texas to get stippled here within the next week or so. So next time you see them, hopefully they'll be stippled. Just add a little bit of grip. And I think I'm going to try and do some sort of weaving through here with paracord i have not yet because i really like the grip it's kind of got a nice texturing on there that really helps with it um, i did put a black upper and a tan lower i think this looks cooler um, i have a full polar star fusion engine in here gen 2 revision 3 just the newest one possible it's got all the tri the trident logos and stuff this started out as a mark 2 spr and it's just been upgraded since then um, back up front we did there's a guy named adam harder on uh, hop up and he does custom carbon fiber barrel so he took the base of this barrel for me and he was like hey dude i make custom carbon fiber barrels would you like me to do one for you and i was like dude that's awesome so if you want to go to him i'll actually give him a shout out in the description um he's awesome dude and he makes these and this makes the gun it's already a super light polar star this makes the gun insanely light and so it also looks super cool because you see the carbon fiber texturing right here so from about here to right here is all carbon fiber i'll show that a little bit on a close-up and then it's the normal like barrel everything here so he kind of like cuts it in half it's a really really cool system inside i am running a max hop up i had just tried this out it's a max hop up with a promi barrel and an r hop it's running all the way to the end um it shoots really really good so far i have not used much of the max hop ups but they do fit really well with the fusion engines and the crytax i believe it's the me slash pro uh it's the gold one and then uh, coming back here, I have actually a charging handle that I got from Umbrella. It's really, really nice. I think it's like the Rainier Arms charging handles in real life or the, I'm not exactly sure which one, um, but it's awesome. I'm not sure what red dot to run on here. I've been running a lot of different red dots. And so I ended up with this ACOG. It is really nice. I actually kind of think that it might be like a pretty old real Trigicon one. I'm not 100% sure, but it has a real arms mount on here. I got that verified. And so it's really bright and really nice compared to most one. It feels a lot more rugged, but it feels like it's like 20 years old. I don't have any way of like proving it, um, but it's nice for now. I ran a Trigicon, uh, the solar reflex sight for a little bit. I thought that was cool, the SRS. And I liked that because it has a really wide sight picture and it's really nice for tracking your BBs, but I haven't really landed on a consistent sight with that. Down here, we have the PTS grip. I run these on all my guns. And then Tough One grips, literally run them on all my guns too. I love a bigger grip. I love that it's rubberized. It feels good even with the gloves that I always wear. And then on the back, finally wrapping up the gun, we have a Fab Arm stock. I got this in a trade, and this is like a real steel stock. It's made in Israel. It's like $110, which is stupid. I would not pay that much for it, but the fact that I got it in a trade, it is really, really comfy, and it sits really, really well on this buffer tube, and it's super tight, and a lot of stocks kind of have a wobble. Um, it also has an adjustable cheek riser if I want, but I keep it about at this position, and I really enjoy using this gun. So that is the primary. Leroy Dinkin! Up next, I have my Cry JPC. So this is the rig that I've used for literally eight years now. I love this thing so much. I run a variety of mags. This one is the Magpul PTS high caps. I use these in the highs and the mids. Up next, I have the GMP high RPS mags. I've used these for the longest. I've loved GMP for forever. Um, they're awesome. I use these in the highs and mids as well. And then for like real steel stuff, I also have the real Gen 3P mags with the windows. These are awesome as well. I'm running my Star Wars pork patch, some of my American Milson stars and the alec mag pouch there um i do have my pistol i don't run a whole lot of pistols at events but this is my real one just for like been shooting at the range and stuff i have a gmr insert in here that i really like and so it fits super well it actually fits my gen 5 glock awesome 
um, and it helps retain the mags. Originally, I had not had any of the mags in here, and so this GMR Gen 3 insert, I think I got like about eight months ago, and so before, if I wanted to, I could kind of press it up and use it. I would almost always keep six mags on my front just because I don't do a whole lot of laying on the ground. If I do, it's still not like deep enough where it's an issue for me, and I love it. And then up front, the Blue Force Gear Triple, this, this I think has been on here as long as I've had this play carrier, so literally, like seven or eight years and this thing is a little bit faded a little bit worn as the jpc is just with age it's going to happen but i really like it these are my favorite mag pouches on the front of plate carriers i honestly don't think there's a better option i think there's a lot of other good options for single pouches but these are literally the best they sit so tight to your chest compared to other pouches and they retain the mag so well they're also really easy to kind of pull out do a faster reload if you want as well i always reload from left to right um, if I'm using at a, at a Milsim game and I'm going to be transitioning left to right, I'll run four mags strong hand reload and then I'll run two mags as like an offhand reload if I want to. Um, but it's pretty cool and it's a good system. On my left, I have my radio pouch right here. I run my Baofeng UV5R, which I'll get into a little bit later. And then I recently just added two pistol mags. Honestly, this is mostly because of my Glock. Um, I've just put it here. I don't really run pistols a ton at open plays because there's no need to at an American Milsim event. I haven't been to those in like three years, so I haven't needed it. Last time I did, I had a belt. I think I was running Elite Force 1911, which was awesome. So I threw two pistol mag pouches there. I like to keep my sides pretty open if I need to, but I also like to be able to carry enough mags also as well, like at events where if I need them, I can. So that comes to the right side and I have another Blue Force Gear Double. This one's in Coyote. I got this in a trade. I don't really care a ton color-wise. I like Multicam slash Coyote slash Ranger Green. I love all of them for different situations. But I run doubles here and that's a little bit annoying if I am like shouldering my rifle and constantly going down like this. But I think they fit and sit tight enough to my body that it's fine. And I will never access these on a quick reload. I will just, when I have time, kind of put it away because it is so hard to go all the way across your body and have to reload. It's just not necessary. All right, shoulder pads. I've actually had these for a long time too. I think these are the HSGI shoulder pads. They kind of display the weight a little bit better instead of being like the normal thin JPC strands. These ones help a lot and they have rubberized texture. This thing sits so well to me. I've literally never even needed another plate carrier because I've never had an issue with this since I've tried it. Um, they fit awesome. And then on the back, I do not have one on it, but I will run a GMR mini map. I actually just sold my multicam one. I like to mess around with the Gen 2s or Gen 3s. I always will strictly run GMR mini maps. I think they're awesome. I also run a double mag insert in the back there. So if I need two more mags for emergency or whatever I want to do, and then I'll hold anything that I need in there, grenades, gas, BBs. At open plays, you really don't need them, but at a Milsim, it's awesome to have a little back panel. The problem is I just haven't decided what color works well with multicam. I really liked the Night Park 01, but I just don't think the green kind of fits that well with the tan base pattern. Uh, I don't think it looks that good. And then I bought a Coyote one and that was cool. And I think I'm gonna end up with a Ranger Green one. I really like the Ranger Green on the back, but I have to find one in Gen 3. I've not been able to find one. It's been like six months that I've been looking. So that is the plate carrier setup. For the gloves that I'm running, I've run these Oakley hard knuckle gloves for forever. These are the ones with like the carbon fiber Kevlar here. I literally have two holes in the right side. So I think it is time for me to upgrade. I really like running gloves. If you've ever been shot in the hands, it sucks. And so having gloves that are like this is awesome, but it is time. There are permanent holes and sweat stains in these from eight years of airsoft. And so I think it is time for me to replace them as I will show you right here, this this thumb is almost coming off. All right, up next we have a fanny pack. This is something I've actually run for a while. I used to run belts and then I stopped running belts because I thought it was annoying. But this fanny pack is awesome because it doesn't really sit anywhere that's like super awkward. I have my sides free so I can lay down and if I need to go prone, I can. Um, in here, I've made, I used this last event because I was keeping patches and stickers for all the people that came up to me like, hey man, uh, can I get a patch or can I get stickers? And so I would have them in there. Um, I keep my phone in here as well. I kind of just have that chilling. Um, and then also if I need to keep like money for the event or uh, cards, certain events you require, you need cards. And so that I will kind of put that in there or anything I kind of need quick access to that I don't want to get on my back panel. Help me. Sweet. All right, so this is my helmet setup. This is an Emerson uh, jump helmet, base helmet. I think this is like, this the one with the holes in it. I have replaced literally everything on it. It makes an awesome base and it's a really nice base. However, the pads and stuff are a little uncomfortable and so I replaced literally everything on it. Like I said, this is an OpsCore HNAPE. It literally feels like I'm wearing clouds on my head. I love this thing. It used to have issues where it hurt and I'd have like pinching or pain or whatnot, but this is awesome. It's super comfy as well. So these are the Obscore HNAPE and then I put in the Team Wendy Zorbium Zap Pads in there. I'll get some close-ups 
um, but it's really nice. And then I threw a cry helmet cover on over top. This thing's awesome and it makes, it's a little bit more realistic multicam. The Emerson when it came out was a little, you can just tell it's not real multicam obviously. And uh, I do have a Stars and Stripes here. I got this from a dude that went on tour and served this and used this in Afghanistan. He gave me at my first American Milsim event, which I thought was awesome. So I've just worn that. Um, always have the, <laughs> the stars facing forward. Um, I got my GoPro mount up here. And then I actually put this on. This is a Night Evolution flashlight. I got this at another thing. And I thought it was pretty cool because there were times when I was playing night games where I needed kind of like a little low light. And I didn't want to use something else. So you can kind of click this on. It's a little red light reading maps or anything like that. Um, and if I want to run nods, I can. I have not invested in nods. I don't care that much about them yet. I have not needed them. I used them once in Airsoft and it was awesome, but it was also, there's just not enough people that had them that I needed them that much. Um, and I don't play, I said, I don't play enough Milsim anymore where I can justify spending two grand on a setup there. Um, and then Alec Mac 101 patch on the back. I don't have any counterweight pouches or anything. I've thought about running a bigger battery to the back there, but I have not got to it yet. But I love this helmet. It's a great base. Once again, I've had most of my stuff for like seven or eight years, and I've really liked what I got when I got it. And so I've just been tweaking things a little bit here and there. Um, I have ESS Turbo Fan Goggles. These are awesome. They're in black. It's just the only color I found them in. I don't really care about it. And then this is the old mask that I have worn and I have it weaving in top into these rails, into the arc rails, which is nice. And so I think this thing is like old and rusted from all that I've played airsoft with, but it fits really well on my face and that's all that matters. All right, calm me. Thanks. Okay, so for comms, I run them right here. I don't normally have this antenna in. I'm just messing with this. I usually have a shorter antenna. And so I will have my Baofeng UV5R and I have it connected to a Code Red headset, I believe. So I just have an earpiece. Um, as Drake says, check them for a wire or earpiece. Um, and then I have them, I just will connect it right here. So my push to talk and I kind of throw this over my ear and talk in it. And then if I need to push to talk and stuff, I was mostly listening to comms. I was never really in that much leadership at the AMS events that I played in because I only went to four. And so I was, I was like communicating with my buddies from Z-Shot. And so I had this in my ear. And then if I needed to, I would just use the push to talk. And it was a cool little setup. I really like these. They're pretty affordable as well. It was a, it was a good setup. I never had issues with it. Um, and one of the few setups that I've tried, I tried like a push to talk over here, but it was just annoying if it got too loud. And if I wanted to be stealthy, I needed something that was quieter. But I think that's it. Thanks for joining this video, guys. I appreciate you. Um, I'm glad that I can show you my loadout. This was a little bit longer than I expected, but I appreciate that you guys stayed to the end if you did. I think some of you really wanted a more in-depth loadout. When I did videos in the past, you were like, man, go into more detail. Why do you do this? Why do you do that? So that's been the video. This has been Alec Mac 101, and I'll see you guys later. Have we got anything on the left or right? Yeah. yeah. What's up, pimps? <laughs> we got some people on the left and right. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. Pew, 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 pew.